Chris and I are on our way to meet Tanya. She's a great client of mine. I built tons of enclosures for her through the years. She loves tarantulas, she loves snakes. She's been talking a while that she wants a lizard. So we're gonna meet with her and find out what she's looking for. Hi guys. Hey, how are you? Come on in. She's got a great collection. No kidding, look at this. A lot of people have other hobbies like riding bikes and hiking. My hobby is my collection. I have 10 snakes, all different sizes, shapes, morphs, and I have 12 tarantulas. These animals, snakes, they are the things that I love to come home to at night. The minute I put one around my neck, it totally soothes me and makes me relaxed after a long day's work. So I have here Levi. He's a red-tailed Columbia boa. Oh, look at the size of this guy. In Alberta, the boa constrictor is actually the biggest snake that you can legally own, and they're huge. Boa constrictors can get to about 10 feet, so we recommend you have a lot of experience before owning one. <laughs> That's a thick snake. Oh, he's beautiful. Look at the size of him. Male boas are, you know, a substantial animal. You can be looking at something up to around 50, 60 pounds max size. These guys kill by constriction. They're a constrictor. I mean, it's in the name, boa constrictor. So what they'll do is they'll grab onto the prey. They'll actually coil around it to incapacitate it, and then they'll squeeze, cutting off the blood supply, and they tend to go into cardiac arrest and pass very quickly. What happens to is they'll sense the prey has died, they sense there's no struggle, they can't feel the heartbeat, they'll let go and then they'll eat the animal. He's really nice, calm. Yeah. Not aggressive at all. He's a big boy. And I bring him outside to get lots of exercise. When I bring Levi out, all the neighbors go in. <laughs> so Levi eats full grown rabbits. Wow. Um, at least twice a month. For some reason, I'm known as the snake lady. Um, I don't know how I got that name, but that's my nickname. There's this misconception out there that anybody that loves reptiles should be covered in tattoos, piercings all over their face, green hair. I'm a normal girl, you know, I'm a business girl during the week and I love these animals. I fell in love with Noman. Um, I've been looking after him for a family while they're on vacation this summer and this little dude has just stolen my heart. I have to give him back, so oh. I need one of my own. So you want a bearded dragon or you want something different? Um, the bigger the better. Anybody that knows me knows that I have to have everything large. So the largest snakes, the largest spiders, and now I need a large lizard. Um, something that's smart. I want something that's going to be able to identify me when I come into a room. And then something that I can slap a leash on and walk. There's definitely a few options. I mean, I can think, you know, something like a tegu. Exactly. They're smart, they're big, uh, they make great pets. As long as it's gonna grow big, it's gonna be smart, I'm good. It's top of the food chain for intelligence is monitors and tegus. Something like that would be amazing for me. Yeah, you think you can handle a five foot lizard? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder what we can come up with. Oh, there's lots of options. Yeah. And we'll build an awesome enclosure for it. Awesome, guys. I'm excited. You get to play with more animals. I know, that's the big thing, yeah. yeah. More animals to play with. Awesome. I have faith in you, Greggy. Greggy will make the right choice. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel and I are here at Tanya's house. We're here to bring Tanya her new white throat monitor and set up this awesome enclosure. This is Tanya's collection. Wow, look at all these animals. She's got a lot of snakes. I know Tanya loves to show off her snakes and tarantulas. Now she's got an awesome monitor lizard to be able to show her neighbors. She's got a wicked collection. She keeps really good care of her animals. I am not in love with snakes, but ever since my daughter Billy held a snake at the shop, I remember how happy she was. <laughs> Can I do? <laughs> I still don't love them, but we understand each other. She's got a really big boa in there. Where? Well, it, it's funny enough, it's like about seven feet long, but it hides in that little hide. Seriously, the whole thing can hide in there? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. All right, let's get everything unloaded. These enclosures are pre-built, so we really just need to bolt these together, put them in place, and start adding the enrichment items. PVC is a great caging material. It's super lightweight, and it's really easy to put together. Good. Yep. Yeah. 
Perfect, we got light. All right, now the substrate into the tank for the monitor here. What we're using is a mixture of cocoa fiber and sand. The monitor will like to dig a little bit, so this just mimics dirt without being really mucky and, and dirty. We're just installing some cork bark in here and then some driftwood. It'll be great to give the enclosure a little bit of depth and uh, some enrichment for the animal. I put the driftwood in the corners because that's where the spot lamps are, so that's where it's going to bask. The monitor really needs uh, higher humidity, so what we've done is we've installed the starter Mist King system. It's going to spray periodically. It's on a timer. It makes things easier for, for Tanya. All right, here he is. Let's get him in his new home. Let's get him up and warm it up in the basking spot. Do you like it? I don't know, he doesn't want to let go of me. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There you go. That's a perfect spot for him. Let him warm up, get used to the spot. Yeah, he looks super comfortable. It's a perfect spot for him to grip, eh? Yeah, he'll love all the driftwood in here because it'll it'll be easy for him to climb. Same thing with the cork bark. But that'll be a perfect spot for him because it's right under the uh, under this basking bulb, so that's where he's gonna warm himself. I think we're ready for Tanya. Yeah? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Come on in. Come check him out. Oh my God. Oh my God, that's so amazing, you guys. Good pick, Greggy. <laughs> white throat? A white throat, yeah. Oh, good job, Greggy. Beautiful. <laughs> High five. Nice. This is gorgeous. I chose the white throat monitor for Tanya. She really wanted a smart lizard and she wanted something that's gonna get quite large. The white throat monitor gets to be about five feet long. You could put a leash on it and walk it if you really wanted to. Oh my God, it's amazing. That's a good sized monitor. It is. Nice. I'm so thrilled. Thank you so much. When I first walked in, I was so surprised and shocked to see that it was a monitor. I thought that the white throat monitors were more rare in this area, so I was so happy that Greg had made that choice for me. These guys, they're always scanning the room, always, you know, making eye contact. It just, it seems like there's a lot going on in their heads. And he's little now, I mean, he's gonna get to five feet. So we'll come back and build something a little more permanent in a few years. Thank you so much, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Greg. Thank you. 